everyone, it's me, Gemma, and I'm at Crumbs and Doilies HQ, and I don't know what it's like where you are, but in London, it's really characteristically grey and miserable. So when it's like this, I like to make things that are really bright and fun. And today, I'm going to show you guys how to make a rainbow cake. That's right, it's time, people. Time for the rainbow cake. Let's go. So to make your rainbow cake, the first thing you're going to need to know is that you need lots of bowls and lots of space because you have to mix six colours up. So we need to do that first. So I like to add my colour to the milk that I put in the mixture. It goes in at the end, but it's wise to get this bit out of the way early. So I have got nine tablespoons of whole milk here. I'm just going to add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla into that, just so it's all mixed in now. So once that's all mixed in, you then need to divide it into six. So that's one and a half tablespoons of milk. Um, and I have six bowls here and I've got six colours. And I'm using colour paste today because it's much more concentrated than liquid. And I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue and purple. There's probably more colours in the rainbow but I don't want to be here forever. So I've got my tablespoon and I'm just going to divide this milk up. So once you've divided your milk evenly between the six bowls, you then need to colour it. So I'm going to start with red and I'm going to use about a baked bean size amount because it is really concentrated but you do want your colours to be quite strong. Mix that really well and then when you finish that, move on to your other five colours until you have a rainbow. So once you've mixed all your colours, just pop them to one side until you're ready to use them. So now you need to get on with making the batter and I have got 750 grams of softened unsalted butter here. I'm just going to put that in my mixer with 750 grams of caster sugar. And then just put that mixer on a medium to high speed and you're going to beat those together for about six or seven minutes until it's gone really, really pale and fluffy. Right, that's ready now. It's gone really, really pale and it's lovely and fluffy and mm, smells really good. So now it's time for the eggs. So, I'm going to need nine large free-range eggs for this and I'm going to crack them all into a bowl and give them a little mix so then I can add them in stages. Once your eggs are all mixed together, you then need to put your mixer back on to slightly less fast speed and then add it in about five or six stages mixing quite well between each one. If your mixture looks like it's curdling, then don't panic. You can add a bit of your flour, just a, a tablespoon or two, and that'll help bring the mixture back together again. Okay, so it's all the eggs in there, it's got a really silky consistency and it's looking really tasty but it's not going to be a cake if we don't put flour in it. So I've got 750 grams of self-raising flour which I've sifted and I'm just going to put that in and put it on a really low setting. That's all nicely mixed in, I haven't lost too much of the air. So I went real slow. 
And now I need to divide it into six, but obviously there's quite a lot of batter there and it's a little bit difficult to do that by eye. So I'm gonna use my trusty scales. Grab yourself a set of electric scales and a bowl. And you need to measure the whole amount of batter that you've got into that. Because then you can divide it by six and be super accurate. Right, it's 2,689 <laughs> grams. So I've got my calculator here and I've divided that by six and I've got 448 grams with a little bit on the side. Just forget that. So 448 grams need to now go in each of our six bowls. Now that you've got your mixture all divided equally, you need to mix these really carefully. So I'm going to use a spatula. You can use a metal spoon if you want. You just mustn't knock out too much of that lovely air that you produce. So just be really gentle and fold it all through. All my lovely batter is now mixed and coloured and separated and raring to go. So I've got six eight inch sandwich tins. Um, I'm really lucky because I have lots of sandwich tins, but if you don't have that many, you can get away with doing this recipe with two tins. You just have to divide the whole recipe by three. It does mean you're gonna have to do all the stages three times and it is gonna take quite a long time, but at least you don't then have to run out and buy six of these guys. So six of these and I've got butter all over them and I've dusted that with flour so that'll stop the whole mixture from sticking and then I just wanna put all my batter into each one and level it off with a palette knife. Ready. So now I just need to bake them at 170 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes or until a skewer comes out clean when you stick it in the middle. While my cakes are cooking in the oven, I'm going to get on with making my buttercream. I'm just going to make some white vanilla buttercream and I'm going to start with 400 grams of soft unsalted butter. And I'm going to beat that really fast for about five minutes until it's got really pale and fluffy. That is looking pretty good. So now I just need to add 900 grams of sifted icing sugar and I'm gonna put it in in two batches um, and I'm gonna beat for about two minutes in between each one. Okay, that's ready to have the milk put in it. So I've got five tablespoons of whole milk and I'm just gonna add about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I just need to put the mixer on on a really low speed and just add all of that milk and then beat it on quite a high speed for about another two minutes. My icing is ready. It's white and it's fluffy and it looks delicious. So I'm just gonna put some cling film over the bowl wait for my cakes to come out and cool down, and then we're gonna ice. My cakes have come out of the oven and they're completely cool, and so now it's time to decorate them. So I'm gonna show you how to trim, fill, and cover them with buttercream. So the first thing to do is to trim your cake. So as you can see, they've puffed up quite nicely and they're looking really good, but they do have a kind of crusty outer shell, if you like, which is the bits that have come into contact with the tin and also the bits that the oven's cooked on top. And it's also not level at all, so if you try and stack these up now, that's gonna be all wonky, and also it's gonna be massive. So, I'm gonna trim them. So I'm gonna use a cake leveler for that. If you don't have one of these, you can use a serrated knife. You just have to be super careful that you get the knife in level. Um, this makes that way easy, and I've got it on notch three at the moment. Uh, so it's just under an inch high for each, for each level. I'm going to start with my red level um, and using my cake leveller, I'm just going to gently shuffle it backwards and forwards going through the sponge. So just remove that top layer and pop it to one side and it's lovely and level there. So just carry on doing that with all your um, six sponges and you'll see that I've got them on baking parchment. That just makes it easier to move them around without kind of breaking them in pieces.
So when you cut into your rainbow cake at the end, you want it to be a nice clean colour all the way from edge to edge. And at the moment, as these cakes have been baking in metal tins and it's got a bit hot on the edges, they've got this kind of rather unsightly gross coloured crust around the side. So I'm going to trim that off. So what you need is something slightly smaller than the diameter of your cake. And I'm using a seven inch cake drum for that. Um, you could use a plate or anything that's just a little bit smaller than the cake itself. Just pop that on top in the middle, grab yourself a nice sharp knife and just trim all the way around, very gently. And then take your drum off and then remove that outer crusty bit and just set it away. And then you're left with this really nice clean circle which is gonna look great when you slice through it. So just carry on with all of the other ones. My cakes are level, they've trimmed, they're brilliant. So now I just need to fill and decorate them. So I have got myself a turntable here, which is a really essential piece of kit if you're serious about cake decorating. It will make your life so much easier and really it's the only way to get nice straight sides on your cake. If you don't have one of these, don't panic. I didn't have one for a long time and I still managed to work it out. So just make sure you've got at least a cake board and if you don't have a turntable, just put the cake board on a bit of greaseproof paper and then you can kind of spin it around like this. <laughs> Sorry, that's not even work. that's not working. So I'm just not gonna mention what you can do if you don't have one. You just don't have one, you have gotta live with yourself. So just put that down on your turntable, right in the middle, and then get a bit of that buttercream you made. And so I've got about a third of that buttercream in here because I don't want it to get too crummy. So put a little bit on the board itself just so that your cake sticks to it. And then starting with your purple level, pick it up really gently using your whole hand and just put it right in the middle of that cake drum. Give it a little press down to make sure it's really in, in place. And then I like to give the inside of my cakes a little crumb coat just to lock the, the crumbs in before I give it a real good filling. So grab a little bit of buttercream on your crank palette knife. So once you've got a nice thin layer, then you need to fill it properly. So get a nice generous blob, pop it in the middle and then spread that evenly all over. That's my purple layer done. So now I just repeat that with all the other ones, starting with blue, then green, yellow, orange, and finishing with red. Okay, my cake is filled. Now I'm gonna give it a crumb coat, just so that when I decorate it for real, it's nice and clean and crumb free. And I'm just gonna smear some buttercream on really tight, uh, just to lock in the crumbs. It doesn't have to be really neat and tidy, but it does have to be completely covered. So I've done that, and now I just need to put it in the fridge for at least half an hour, up to an hour, to completely set so we're ready for the final layer. My cake's come out of the fridge. It's been in there for about an hour, and it's nice and set, and all those crumbs are locked in tight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it with buttercream. And I've got a straight palette knife here, and I've also got a cake scraper. Now this is really, really useful if you wanna get really nice, clean, straight sides. So if you haven't got one of these, you can do it without one, but it's super useful. I'm just giving it a really nice thick layer with my palette knife. My cake's got about a half a centimetre thick icing on there, um, and now I'm just gonna scrape off the excess with my cake scraper, so it'll leave it with really nice clean lines and straight sides.
almost there. Now I just need to make it look really rainbowy on the outside as well. So I kept back some crumbs from the off cuts earlier and I'm just going to sprinkle those around the top just to give it a bit of decoration. Well, there he is, the rainbow cake, the big one. And it's obviously super exciting as it is, but the true test of a good rainbow cake is what lies within. So let's cut them open and have a little look. Look at that rainbow, it's so clean and neat and tidy in there and not only does this cake look really impressive, it tastes really good, it's moist and fluffy and you're going to love it. And my flatmate loves it so I'm probably going to have to take this one home. I'll be back next week with another recipe, in the meantime if you like this video then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and then you'll get loads more uh, recipes from me and I will see you next week with another one, bye!